would have a gun <laughs> <laughs> to protect himself, you know. And that's, that's, that's the truth. America is not a democracy. But you ask the most intelligent people what form of government America is supposed to be, they'll say a democracy. Because that's what, that's what they've been brainwashed. They've been psyoped into believing that. They believe that we're in Iraq. They believe we're in Iraq to promote democracy. The word democracy, you hear George Bush saying democracy means freedom. No, democracy equals new world order. Democracy equals slavery. The word democracy is not synonymous with freedom. It's the opposite of freedom. Democracy is the worst form of government you can have because it's majority rule. And the government can tell you exactly what they want to tell you to do because the, the majority wants it. I don't care what the majority wants. I live my life as I choose. And if I don't commit violence, theft, or fraud against another human being, I can live my life as I wish. That's my choice. And if I'm allowed to make mistakes, because when you make mistakes, you learn from them. You grow as a human being. We're put on this earth to become the best individuals we can be, to fulfill our God-given potential, right? We're not here to put on this earth so that the government can tell us how to live our lives and what we must do, we put into these systems and these paradigms. No, the same thing in health. You, you know, if you're sick, you have to have a certain protocol. Nonsense. You know, be individuals, think for yourself, have critical thinking, you know? And so what's happened is that because they've taught everybody that we're a democracy, which is not true, now, so then in 1913, they bring the Federal Reserve System into being. Right? And now you have this Federal Reserve System, which then in 1913 got the right to create money for the government. When before that, the government created its own money. Now, now the government, when it needed money, had to borrow it from this private bank called the Federal Reserve, which is a private bank owned by individuals, incorporated in Delaware. And so um, what happens is now the government borrows money from them to fund the government, then the government says, well, we have to pay these people interest. How are we gonna pay them interest? Let's impose a tax on the labor of the American people, which never existed before, to pay the interest of the bankers. In fact, in 1980, Ronald Reagan said not one red cent uh, of your income tax money goes to run the country, it all goes to the Federal Reserve. Well, it, go, what the, it was the Grace Commission report that said that uh, all the, not one nickel goes to the infrastructure of the country, you know. Uh, I guess Reagan quoted that then. Right. right. And so, um, but the point, the, point, the point I'm trying to make is that by creating this Federal Reserve system, the government now became dependent on these private banks for money. And they started take, taxing us, you see. And so now, now what happens is that um, in... 35, I believe it was, Social Security started. And they gave Social Security cards, said not to be used for identification, the Social Security number right on the card, right? And through Social Security, they started deducting money out of your, out of your paycheck. That was the first time they were ever take, could take money out of your paycheck, because people agreed to it because they thought it was going to the retirement fund. And so then when they instituted the income tax again, they started taking money out of your paycheck because Social Security could do it. So then, then they could do it again. You see what I'm saying? And so now they've even taken control of the tax, the, the tax payment itself. I mean, we're really like you're a slave. They're right. taking it right there when you make it. Exactly. They don't even trust the public enough to, to go send them a check. Themselves. Yeah. Right. So they take it out automatically because they know people aren't going to want to pay it. So what's happened is that through the implementation of the Federal Reserve System, the government has become uh, vested in these bankers and they get their money from the bankers. And so then they impose a tax on us, which makes us more slaves, makes it more difficult for us to survive, right? Giving them more profits. And now what's happened is that uh, through the, the, the Federal Reserve System, the bankers have pretty much taken control of our government. It doesn't matter Republican and Democrat anymore because they're both the same. Neither one of them are talking about shutting down the Federal Reserve System or stopping the payment of taxes, you know, uh, or any of the big issues that face Americans, right? So uh, I had a friend, Nick Rockefeller, okay, who was one of the Rockefeller family, and he, uh, uh, when I was running for governor in Nevada, he came to me, introduced himself to me through an attorney, and uh, we became friends. We started talking about things, 
And um, I learned an awful lot from Mr. Rockefeller. And one of the things that we used to talk about was the ultimate plan of the banking industry, what they wanted to accomplish. And the goals of the uh, banking industry, not, not just the Federal Reserve System, but the private banks in Germany and England, all over the, Italy, all over the world, they all work together. They're all central banks. And they're, uh, and they're all part of the Communist Manifesto. You know, central banking is one of the major planks of the Communist Manifesto. We talk about America being a capitalistic country, but yet at the same time we have a central bank that plans everything for us, right? And the graduated income tax is another plank of the Communist Manifesto, right? So right there you have two major planks of the Communist Manifesto that have been brought in because of the Federal Reserve System, okay? So uh, the ultimate goal that these people have in mind is the goal to um, create a one world government run by the banking industry, run by the bankers. Where, and, and they're doing it in sections. The, the European currency, the euro, and, and the European constitution is one part of it. Now they're trying to do it in America with the North American Union, right? And they want to create a new currency called the Amero, right? And uh, the, whole, the, the whole agenda is to create a one world government where everybody has an, R, R, an RFID chip implanted in them. All money is to be um, in those chips, right? There'll be no more cash. And this is giving me straight from Rockefeller himself. This is what they want to accomplish. And all money will be in your chips. And so, any, so not, instead of having cash, Anytime you have money in your, in, your, in your chip, they can take out whatever they want to take out whenever they want to. If they say you owe us this much money in taxes, they just deduct it out of your chip digitally. Total control. Total control. And if you're like me or you, and you're protesting what they're doing, they can just turn off your chip. And you have nothing. You can't buy food. You can't do anything. It's total control of the people. And that chip's connected to a database that has your purchasing records, what you do, what everything, you sell. everything is in there, you know. And so they they want a one world government, controlled by them, everybody being chipped, all your money in those chips, and they control the chips and they control people. And you become a slave. You become a serf to these people. That's their goal. That's their intentions. More than a decade ago, I began getting secret government documents, and we published them, where the feds were training uh, the local police uh, and the military that gun owners, conservatives, people that made frequent references to the U.S. Constitution were terrorists. That's a quote. But in 2009, it broke into the national media when we received uh, the secret MIAC report from a state police officer. Um, and that was in the state of Missouri, but the feds had written it, demonizing Ron Paul, people that wanted to end the Federal Reserve, people that wanted liberty and freedom. And now more secret reports have been released, like the Department of Homeland Security report, which the feds admit they wrote, that says returning veterans are the number one terror threat in America, that gun owners uh, are part of that number one threat, that people buying ammo are the number one threat. Think about this. You have these private bankers overthrowing the United States, and they're secretly training the police that gun owners and patriots and veterans are the number one threat. So they're saying the American people that follow the Constitution and Bill of Rights that will actually stand up against this tyranny are terrorists because they are the terrorists. They are the criminals coming in with a corporate takeover, a hijacking of the nation. Eric, can you be specific about when you met Rockefeller, how it happened in these discussions? Uh, I met Rockefeller through a female attorney I knew who called me up one day and said, uh, one of the 